We start with uh, Misra C2012. It's a coding standard which aims at subsetting the C language to reduce the possibility of errors and focuses on safety. It contains 159 guidelines, of which 16 are directives, 116 are decidable rules, and 27 are undecidable rules. Let's look at an example of a directive, Directive 1.3. All code shall be traceable to documented requirements. In this case, there is insufficient information for a static analyzer to provide an answer. And uh, one common misconception about undecidability is that it could be due to lack of information. And instead, when there is lack of information, whether a certain guideline is decidable or undecidable doesn't even come into question. So in this case, it's a directive and the user uh, review is needed. If instead all the information is available, then it needs to be decided. It, it, it MISRA calls the uh, guideline a rule and it has to be decided whether it's decidable or undecidable. An example of a rule which is decidable is ash and def should not be used. So in this case, it's, it is possible to think of a uh, analyzer which scans through the source code and identifies all the undef preprocessing directive. There's no problem with that, and it's clearly decidable. An example of undecidable rule is rule 2.1. A project shall not contain unreachable code. So if you think about it, we already seen earlier on an example of uh, uh, that it is undecidable whether the execution goes through a certain path or not. And this is the general version of it, which is also undecidable. So we said uh, MISRA C2012 has got a high degree of enforcement, automated enforcement available. And why is that? It's a um, couple of uh, points. It's uh, the selection of guidelines for inclusion in MISRA C2012. Um, consider automatic enforcement as one of the criteria. So everything else being equal, if a guideline could be automatically enforced, that would have been a, a, a favorable feature. Um, and the classification helps between directives and rules and decidable and decidable helps to highlight when there is scope for further manual effort. Uh, the other feature is of MISRA C2012 is that it's about preventing defects rather than de detecting defects. So it applies early in the software life cycle and rules can be stricter than necessary, but this strictness in some cases helps uh, avoiding undecidability. And uh, the sometimes this strictness of rules gets in the way. So MISRA C2012 also foresees a mechanism, a deviation procedure, where deviation can be made to the strictness of, strictness of rules, uh, but this deviation should be reasoned and justified. So now we got in get into a little bit more detail of the trade-off that there exists between flexibility and enforceability uh, by comparing a couple of standards, CERT C and MISRA C. So how they address the same problem from a slightly different perspective in these cases. Let's consider the short circuit behavior of the logical <coughs> and and HOR operators. Uh, this short circuit behavior is sometimes not well understood by developers, and this can be the cause of errors. Third C, um, rule XB02C, states, be aware of the short circuit behavior of the logical AND and OR operator. So this is a rule that cannot be enforced by a static analyzer. It seem, it, 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 there is not enough information. MISRA C provides a stricter rule rule 13.5, the right-hand operand of a logical and or OR operator shall not contain persistent side effects. So whether 
the user understands or doesn't understand, the developer understands or doesn't understand the behavior, Misra C says, don't get into a situation where this behavior can be misinterpreted. It's an undecidable rule, so not 100% enforceable, but it can be enforced by a static analyzer to some extent. Another example of a problem is um, the typical problem of having uh, uh, comparing two objects in an if statement, for instance, if A equals, is equal to B, uh, developers may use a single equal character instead of a double just by mistake, and that becomes an assignment, and that is, could, could be an error, could be unintentional. Uh, third C prevents it by saying do not perform assignments in selection statements. And this rule is decidable. It is possible uh, to identify what the selection statements are, um, to identify the expressions that are used, and uh, whether the root of those expressions is an assignment or not. So it's decidable. And the same problem addressed by Misra, rule 13.4, is the result of an assignment operator should not be used. So not just in selection statements, but anywhere. It's still decidable, but it's stricter. And the fact that it's stricter, it helps reduce undecidability that may arise for, for other reasons. So for instance, when you have side effects, uh, these side effects combined with other side effects in certain circumstances can give uh, rise to unspecified or undefined behavior, and this can be undecidable. And that can is some, somehow prevented at source. Third problem is with the restrict uh, qualifier for pointers. So it can give rise to undefined behavior. Third C, rule X43C, states avoid undefined behavior when using restrict qualified pointers. This is undecidable. Misra C, again, is, mm, gives up the flexibility to increase enforceability. Rule 8.14, the restrict type qualifier shall not be used. So it's decidable whether some source code contains the restrict type qualifier. Basically, the developer is prevented from using it altogether. It doesn't completely get away from undecidability. For instance, the standard C library provides function where the restrict type qualifier is used and the developer may misuse it. So there's still an undecidability to be addressed directly. So it's unavoid unavoidable in that case, but in other cases, Misra prevents to further introduce unde um, und undecidable problem which are undecidable to detect.